Sunlight, let's look at the picture. Sunlight hits a photovoltaic cells, produce direct current electricity, which is fed into an inverter. We can see the inverter under the roof. The inverter, like we said before, converts the DC electricity to alternating current for use at home. Now, whenever the PV system produces more electricity than the home needs, it will flow back into the national grid for other homes to use. All the excess energy that I'm not using, I can sell. Governments and utility providers use feed-in tariffs to pay electricity that is exported from the PV system, being received by them and distributed to other homes. Very, very important subject is what happens if there is a power cut. It is important for a safety uh, precautions point of view. Because PV system continues to generate electricity because it continues to receive energy coming from the sun. And this is regardless if there is a power cut or no power cut. So if there is a power cut, we know that there is no electricity on the grid, on the lines, on the wires. But the system continues to generate electricity. So we have to divide, we have to split, we have to cut. From safety uh, aspects, we have to cut automatically, at zero time, the, uh, the effect, the influence of the PV system on the grid. Now, domestic PV systems that are grid connected will automatically shut down. The way it's being done is that the inverter itself, this component that converts DC input coming from the cells to AC going out of the grid, they themselves need, need grid power to start up and operate. So if there's a power cut, they will not work. This is a safety pressure designed to stop electricity leaking onto the national grid and to protect individuals who may be working to restore the power supply. So basically there is an automatic cut when there is a power cut. Now in this picture, we represent several configurations of strings and meters to put an emphasis on how complete system looks like in top level block diagram. Here on the left, we see panels, PV panels, which are basically connected in series and they are actually making up a string. A string is a group of panels connected, connected between themselves generate electricity. This electricity will go to a DC isolator, safety precautions, we'll talk about it in a minute, and the output of the DC isolator goes to an inverter. This red box inverter receives DC. There are two strings in this case. This is just an example. The inverter receives the DC coming from the panels, convert it into AC, and obviously there's an AC insulator immediately right after uh, the inverter. Now, if there is no power cut, the system goes automatically, the, the energy, the electrical energy, the AC voltage goes to a meter. This meter will display how much the PV system actually generates. Uh, after the, generate, the generation meter, there will be another uh, isolator, again for safety precautions. It will go to the consumer unit, it will go to the export meter and to the utility, and utility meter. Now, the export meter is basically what we produce and send to, to the output, to the grid. B minus A equals C. Export meter minus the generation meter is exactly what is being exported to the grid for which I get, based on feed-in tariff, I get money back from the utility company.
Some systems, which are grid tie, have battery backup. At night, when the cells are not generating any energy, electricity is imported from the usual supply, batteries, in a normal way. The battery is actually used as a backup if the property is connected to the grid, so that power produced during the day can be stored for use in the evening, when there's no sun. Battery backup systems can also power some selected backup loads when the grid is down. We can see right above the dual-purpose inverter that we have a backup AC load. And so the battery send its voltage to the inverter and if there is no current coming from the grid, the battery itself being converted will generate energy and supply to the backup AC load. Because there are some um, equipment, some appliances that even at night will have to continue working. Our refrigerator at home should work 24 hours a day. There are several machines in a production line in any industry that need to work three shifts. So they need to be generated, they need to be energized, I'm sorry, they need to be energized using backup batteries. Batteries to inverter, inverter to AC load. We talked before about the grid tie systems that had a battery as a backup. Now, actually, we're talking about standalone systems, PV systems, which do not connect to the grid. They are standalone. Let's look at this. Off grid or standalone PV systems, they incorporate large amount of battery storage to provide power for a certain number of days and also nights in a row when the sun is not available. The array of solar panels must be large enough to power all the energy needs at the site and recharge the batteries at the same time. As I supply energy to the appliances, the battery gets discharged. As they get discharged, continuously, non-stop, I have to charge them again. The reason? I want to prolong the amount of time, the length of time, that this PV system will actually operate. So as we discharge the batteries to operate appliances, I have to charge them in order to be able to do it the next day and the next night. Now let's look at the left picture. PV array it goes to a combiner box because we have several modules. We have to combine them in order to increase the voltage, the current, and therefore the power. It will go to a circuit breaker, safety precaution we said before. It will go to charge controller. This charge controller has one simple mission, to control the amount and the level of charging of the battery, meaning that when the battery will be, will be fully charged, this controller will stop the continuity of the charging, will stop charging the battery if the battery is always uh, already full. After the controller, after the charge controller, there's another circuit breaker. Notice that between each module, we have two circuit breakers. Safety, safety, safety. After the circuit breakers come the battery, the battery pack. Now, it depends on the number of days or number of hours, nights, and the uh, uh, power consumption consumptions of my appliances, this is what will determine the size of the battery pack. It's basically storage. More batteries, will enable longer time for the PV system to work. Remember, there's no grid. It's a standalone system. The battery charge, the batteries, the battery bank goes to, again, circuit breaker, which will go to an inverter. Inverter receives DC in the input, provides AC in the output, and this output, again, goes to a circuit breaker. Safety will go to the the customer console, electrical console, that distributes these AC electrical energies into the various appliances in the home. We have no grid, 
We have DC coming from the panels, converted by the inverter and distributed to the different appliances. Now, in this picture, we see something different. We see, that we, have, we see that we have a backup generator. This generator means that if the battery is discharged, completely discharged, and we still do not tie ourselves to the grid, the generator will come and will behave as a backup to the batteries. The, de the generator is basically the AC generator. It's connected directly to the inverter, supply uh, energy to it, and again, batteries empty, generator comes as a backup.